Have you noticed it seems like literally everybody is obsessed with raw milk right now? I mean, like I'm guilty. I have some in my fridge at this very moment, but I've even seen a lot of people recently doing like these couple day raw milk cleanses, which is something I had not heard of until like a few weeks ago. And if this idea or topic of raw milk is new to you, it probably seems really disgusting or at the very least dangerous. But there are three really important things that you do need to know about raw milk before you make any decisions. Let's dive into it. My name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance. And today's video is sponsored by Element. More on them in a bit. Okay, first things first, we need to know, is it safe? This is the number one concern that always comes up whenever I talk to anybody about raw milk or if they ask my opinion about raw milk. And if you're drinking raw milk in roughly the mid 1800s, then I would say absolutely not. <laughs> because the history of raw milk is very interesting or really just milk in general. Raw milk was obviously the main form of milk that we had up until really just fairly recently. Traditionally, people get it from their local cows <laughs> or local farmers. And it wasn't until the growth of cities and the need for having a lot more milk for a lot more people in a smaller amount of area that things started to get a little bit sketchy, especially during that mid 1800s time. There was a lot of overcrowding of cows, a lot of sick cows, cows that were fed really questionable waste products. And as a result, the milk that was produced from these cows was just no good. It had this bluish tint to it. So what those producers were doing in these mass produced dairies at the time was creating something called swill milk, something that I also just recently learned about. And it's absolutely disgusting to make this bluish, gross, sickly milk palatable for people. They would add in things like molasses to sweeten it up. And then something else called plaster of Paris, which sounds as inedible as it is. <laughs> and obviously this was before pasteurization. So this was raw milk, although just not very good milk. And this horrible milk led to literally thousands of deaths per year, which obviously led to more people wanting more regulation on these milk producers, which ultimately led to the idea of pasteurization and the removal of plaster. But pasteurization was introduced because this sickly milk that had contaminations needed to be made safe. Pasteurization is essentially where milk is heated up to destroy bacteria and there's different forms of pasteurization. There's lower temperature pasteurization where it's brought up to about 145 degrees and it sits at that temperature for about 30 minutes. This is typically called vat pasteurization if you find it at the grocery store. It's less common now because it does take a little bit more time, but it tends to retain the nutrients a little bit better than some of these other forms of pasteurization. And then there's multiple types of very high temperature pasteurization. This is the ultra pasteurized milk that you'll often find at the grocery store where it's heated up to much higher temperatures for a lot shorter of a time, usually about 15 seconds. This is now the preferred method by a lot of producers because obviously it's a lot faster. You've also probably seen something called homogenization. This is just where they break up the fat globules within milk to make it so that there's not the cream top. There's really no need for this. It's just kind of like a standard of the industry now. And that's why in traditional grocery store milks that have been homogenized, you won't get that traditional cream top that just regular milk has. Now raw milk on the other hand, hasn't gone through any of these processings. It hasn't gone through homogenization. It also has not been pasteurized. So when deciding if raw milk is safe or not, it's really important to look at the actual source of the milk. It obviously has not gone through this pasteurization. So it hasn't had the bacteria killed off, but it also means it doesn't have the good bacteria killed off either, which is one of the main nutritional reasons that we'll get into a second for why people love raw milk. Raw milk should really only be coming from reputable sources that are actually intended for raw milk production because milk that is actually being produced by dairies that are not intending to make it raw have a lot more flexibility in terms of potential contaminants because they're going to be pasteurizing it. Whereas obviously raw milk is not going to be pasteurized. So their overall potential contaminants need to be a lot tighter. They need to be making sure that those are not happening so that it can actually be fed raw. I like the website realmilk.com for finding more reputable sources of raw milk. It's not legal in all states, so it depends on where you're at if you're going to have access to it, but that's actually how I found this brand that's local to me. Now, the real interesting thing about raw milk comes down to the nutritional differences, which is the second thing that you need to know. But before we get into that, I wanna give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Element. I'm actually literally drinking my Element right now. It's the grapefruit flavor, in case you're wondering. Element is an amazing electrolyte 
company that was specifically created with whole food eating, intermittent fasting, and athletes in mind. It contains the sodium, the magnesium, and the potassium to help replace lost electrolytes, all without having any sugar, making it a much better option from a weight loss or a wellness perspective. I personally have at least one element per day, especially now that I'm breastfeeding and I am drinking so much water. So I need to make sure that I'm getting enough electrolytes as well. But even when I wasn't breastfeeding, I was still having element daily, especially after I would work out or on hot days. I just found that I would feel so much better, so much more energized on days that I had element versus days that I maybe forgot to have it. Plus they just taste so good. Like I mentioned, I have the grapefruit flavor right now. And especially as the days are warming up, it is so refreshing, so delicious. But they also have other amazing flavors like their raspberry or orange. And right now element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serve packets free with any element order. It's a really great way to test out all eight flavors. So you can get yours at drinkelement.com forward slash autumn. It's only available through my link. So make sure to check out D-R-I nklmnt.com forward slash autumn. The link will also be in the description down below. I'm gonna have some right now, actually. <laughs> Okay, the second thing you need to know, the nutrient differences. Like why go through all the extra effort and quite frankly, the extra expense of getting raw milk. So huge raw milk advocates will argue that it's nutritionally superior to regular pasteurized homogenized milk. And to be honest, those reported differences really depend on the source that you're looking at. It doesn't seem to have a general consensus of what the differences are, but there are a few things that do appear to be consistent. Raw milk does tend to have higher levels of vitamin A, vitamin B12, vitamin C, and vitamin D. Raw milk also still has the enzyme lactase and lactase is the enzyme that helps to break down lactose. Most of us don't still have that lactase enzyme. Most of us lost that after infancy. That's why a lot of people are lactose intolerant, which is why advocates for raw milk enjoy having the raw milk because it does have that natural enzyme involved. So it could potentially help with digestion of the milk. Pasteurization is also going to destroy the good and the bad bacteria. So that means pasteurized milk is not going to have the good bacteria that could act as a probiotic. When milk is pasteurized, it's also going to do something called denaturing proteins. And there's some debate on what these denatured proteins really do for us. Some say that it could make it harder for our bodies to recognize the dairy proteins and therefore have more of a response to it. So the raw milk could be easier overall to drink and break down. Although that is kind of conjecture, but definitely something I have experienced with the ultra pasteurized milk is that these denatured proteins do make it harder to make things out of the milk. Specifically, I had an issue with making Greek yogurt with the ultra pasteurized milk. Definitely with the homogenized milk that just like didn't even work because the proteins were denatured. The yogurt just came out a lot more like thin like it never set right. The vat pasteurized, which has the lower temperature pasteurization did work a lot better. I actually haven't tried making yogurt yet with raw milk, so I'll see if it does the best. Theoretically, it could possibly do the best because it doesn't have any of the proteins that have been denatured, but we'll see. So raw milk does arguably have more vitamins, probiotics, and enzymes than the pasteurized milk. Which brings me to the third thing, should you consider using raw milk? Personally, I use both. We just recently started having some raw milk because my husband Trevor does get some stuff when he has regular milk. And just out of curiosity, we wanted to test out if having raw milk would cause him to feel stuffy. At least from what he noticed, he does not get stuffy when he has raw milk. And he's having a pretty substantial amount because we're making ice lattes with it. So it was probably about like six ounces of milk that he had at one time. I don't notice a huge difference between the two other than flavor. Oddly enough, I feel like raw milk doesn't have as much of a milk flavor. <laughs> it's a lot more subtle. It doesn't come off as strong. Mm. It does smell good though. The other main reason that I personally wanted to try out raw milk was for making yogurt because it hasn't been pasteurized or homogenized. I want to see if the yogurt comes out a lot better. It's also nice to go for the more nutrient dense option, but honestly for any of the recipes that I make that do involve milk, especially if the recipes are cooked, I'm typically going to go for just a pasteurized grass fed milk, but us using raw milk is definitely an experiment. I still use both, but it is really important to consider the source. I can't stress that enough. No swill milk here. I use that website, realmilk.com to find this. And if you did want to look into it, you could always check that out. But if you decide that you don't want to try raw milk, that's also totally fine. If you're looking for the least adulterated form of milk that has gone through some form of pasteurization, then I would look at the Vat Pasteurized. The brand that I've seen that does that is called, I think it's Alexander. They also have A2 milk, which is an easier to digest protein for most people. And I believe it has not been homogenized because it does typically have cream at the top, but I'm not sure on that. I'll have to double check but that's been my favorite pasteurized milk brand lately. And honestly, I think that one tastes the best. <laughs> now, just like with any type of unpasteurized 
necrotic that is going to have some type of bacteria in there. If you are immunocompromised, then it might not be a good idea. You might wanna check with your doctor first, but regardless of which milk you choose, I still find that whole milk is such a better option than the low fat or skim milk varieties. That is where you're going to make sure that you actually are getting the most nutrient bang for your buck, especially with vitamin K2, which is really only going to be found in whole milk varieties, or at least in measurable amounts. In fact, I did a whole video breaking down the benefits of whole milk. I definitely recommend that you check that out next with this video right here. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. I come out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.